Hi there, Greenwind residents. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Sari, and I'm going to be taking you through a restorative practice. January is um, a time where it is colder and we really have to take care of our souls and our spirits. So today's practice will be centered around restoring our mental fatigue and our physical fatigue. Uh, this time of year, we have the winter that we are battling and dealing with. And so it adds this extra layer of stress, not to mention everything else that is going on in the world. I hope that your new year is starting out right and that you are thriving. So for this restorative class today, as you can see behind me, I have a ton of props. And these are just things that I have around my house. I have couch cushions here, I have a chair, I have a blanket, and you can use really anything that you can find that will help to support your body. And so the practice is all about surrendering, letting go, and supporting ourselves here. So as you can see, I have a chair right in the middle of my mat. And that's the first and only pose that we're going to do with a chair. And you don't have to use a chair. You can use a step stool. Um, you could use a box, anything that you have that's hanging around that will help to elevate your legs. So that's where we're going to start our opening meditation. We're going to allow our spine to just lay flat on the ground and allow ourselves to land. So in doing a restorative practice, often we're not, we don't really realize that we need it until we are a pose or two in. And so I'm gonna offer uh, five or six poses today. We'll see how we go. And even if you just do one that you really love um, or one or two that resonate with you, that's really all that you need. And I'll talk more about how this restorative practice really helps with this with our fatigue, uh, which is very different than actual sleep and rest. Okay, so I'll just give you a few moments if you want to grab a box, grab a chair, grab a few things around your house that you can use for our practice today. And so I have my mat laid out here, and I have my chair, and I um, because my chair is uh, it's not a super soft chair. I just put a blanket over the seat because again, in this restorative practice, we want to create a support system that is comfortable where we don't have to fidget and we're not trying to fix anything where we can just give in. So how I'm gonna get into it is I'm gonna come to a fetal position. I'm gonna come to one side. I'm gonna pick up my legs and then just allow my lower legs to rest here on the chair. And I'm just even scooping my tailbone down. And so with your legs up on the, the chair, it allows your body to become a weight. And any um, fatigue, um, stale energy, heavy energy in your legs, this is a gateway to begin to release that heavy energy. Um, after a few minutes of being in this pose, your legs are gonna feel light. So we'll start with our arms down by our sides. So just taking up as much space as you can. And just give yourself the opportunity to arrive here. So this practice is slow and gentle. Anyone can participate. In this moment, feel your body exactly as it is right now. Notice if the, even though the outer body here is still, notice if your inner body, meaning your mind and perhaps some energy within, is catching up to our outer physical body that is just present and still. Now 
however your body is here in this moment, we're going to begin to embrace it. And that is part of the restorative practice. Setting the stage for embracing and surrendering. Let's start to come into our breath. So as you lie here with your spine firmly down on the mat, you can begin to really breathe into the earth, breathe into your back ribs, back of your head, the sides of your body, your belly and your chest. Finding five deep breaths here. Just allowing your breath to be long. Allowing your breath to be fluid. And allowing your body to be still. Let's bring our left palm onto our hearts and our right palms onto our belly. Breathe into your hands here. Just allow yourself to take up as much space as you can. Breathe into your body. One more breath here. And then release your hands all the way back down by your side. Spin your hands up. So surrendering and letting go most likely doesn't come easy to you. It doesn't come easy to me. And so what we're doing is gesturing our body in ways that supports this intention. So with our palms open here, anything that you're carrying around in your mind, anything that you are gripping to in your body that you know of, and even anything that is that we're carrying around that is unconscious, we can perhaps just place it here right in the center of our hands. We'll just find a few more deep breaths. Let every exhale be an opportunity to intend to release it. So maybe it's a conversation, maybe it's a feeling that you've been carrying around that you know doesn't serve you. Anything that feels stressful to you Just noticing some of the stories in your mind. We're going to stay here for five more breaths. Let your breaths be soft and fluid and light. One more breath here together. Inhale into the body. And exhale. So if your eyes are closed, blink them open. And then softly, we just want to stretch the arms all the way up. And as gently as you brought your body into this pose, we're going to back out of the pose in the same way. So I'm going to slowly roll over to one side. Pause here. Pause here. Notice how your legs feel. Maybe the blood is rushing back into the feet. Notice if they feel lighter, if your body feels relaxed. And then we're going to use our palm that's down on the mat to help lift us all the way up. So part of this restorative practice is obviously uh, laborious. It's a little bit cumbersome. 
and I'm going to try to make it um, as least cumbersome as possible. So if you use a chair or a stool, we're now just going to put it to the side for the rest of practice. And as you just tidy up from this posture, again, you want to just move slowly and continue to just feel the benefits of the practice. So as we organize our environment, we're also reorganizing the body and the mind. So I'm just gonna move my chair to the side. Okay, great. So coming back to the mat, we just had the opportunity to really feel our spine lengthen. So any energy that perhaps was um, kind of clustered or it was caught up in our spine, either from you know running around or feeling stress in our upper back, low back, shoulders or neck, we had the opportunity to regulate um, the spine. You can think about your spines uh, like the spinal fluid, almost just finding some regulation and balance. And so now that we have the opportunity to, you can think of those vertebras just moving back into place. Now we're going to open up the heart gently. So if you have a, a nice firm couch cushion, this is a great opportunity to use it. I'm going to use two blocks and I'm going to bring them together. And then I'm going to bring my cushions, right? And as you can see, I'm just building this little tower here. And I'm gonna to try to keep it as even as possible. And this will support my upper body. Let's see. And then I'm just gonna to come to bring the base of my spine to the edge of my lower pillow. And I'm going to have an extra cushion handy in case I might utilize it. And we're going to start just by bringing the soles of the feet down and just lower your body gently onto the cushion so your whole spine is supported. Now, if this is too much on your upper back and your ribs, your thoracic, then what you can do is take your extra cushion and... Just allow the height of the, the back part of your, um, of your prop tower just to elevate your head a little bit more. So I'm going to, again, set up where the soles of my feet are down, and I'm just going to lower my head down. So this is much more supportive. And you have some options here, okay? You can keep your knees bent. You can also extend your legs straight forward. I'm going to give you one more option. Um, if you do have any low back issues, I do suggest that you keep your knees bent. You can walk your feet out and just allow the knees to draw in towards each other. It's a beautiful release for your low back. And for those of you who want to get into your hips a little bit more, you want to feel um, a bit of a stretch in your inner thighs and hips, you can actually bring the soles of your feet together. Now, I do caution you that um, if you don't have support here for your thighs, if you can always stick a few more pillows um, or blankets or blocks under your thighs, then this is a really nice place. So at the moment, I don't have any more props with me. So I am just going to stay with the soles of my feet down. And then I may change it up and extend my legs. So at the start of every restorative pose, just take a moment, just like we do at the beginning of practice, just to notice. Notice how your body is taking shape now. And how your energy is responding to this very supportive shape. All right, so take that moment to arrive. You can close your eyes or you can keep them open. It's nice to go inward if that feels safe and good for you. And come into your breath. So you can breathe normally or you can give some more attention to the breath. 
And what I mean by that is just beginning to observe it. So notice where your inhales perhaps get caught in your chest or your belly, or maybe you're not even able to take a full breath because you're holding so much tension in the upper thoracic, up in your lungs, up in your throat and shoulders. And here's the thing with observation. When we sit in the seat of the witness, then we get to suspend judgment. So we don't have to create a story about you know, why it's hard for us to breathe in or why it's challenging for us to exhale the breath out. We can just watch it. And notice, you know, as I support my body, as I invite myself to become more present, does my breath shift? And just being with what we call resistance in the body just gives us beautiful feedback. This is how we get to notice ourselves and understand ourselves better and more, right? Just by observing. At any point, if you're feeling too much of a stretch in the inner thighs, if you took this cobbler's variation, you can always bring the soles of the feet back. I do encourage you to not shift around too much in the poses. We want to give the body ample time to really luxuriate and linger in these supportive poses. So what I love about this particular posture, especially if your head is slightly elevated, is that I imagine whatever mental fatigue is going on in my brain, just kind of draining out from the top of my head to my toes. Sometimes we may not even notice that we are mentally fatigued, right? If we've been trying to coordinate, you know, through these holidays and now with some new restrictions during this lockdown, right? There's all this added stress that we are unaware of. And so this is a chance for us to give our minds and opportunities to relax. So let's stay here for another five breaths or so. Let's stay here for one more breath together. Inhale. And exhale. So taking your time as if you have all the time in the world. That's how slowly you're going to move. So I'm going to start to roll off. So my palm catches my chest. And then I'm going to lift myself all the way back up to sit again. Um, the dessert of each of these poses that we're going to move into is pausing to feel the effects and the benefits of just bringing ourselves into these shapes and allowing ourselves to be fully supported. It is so essential and nourishing for our nervous system, all system. Okay, so we're going to continue to build our prop tower here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna sit in a cross-legged position and I'm going to bring my right ankle in front of my left ankle. So just an easy cross-legged position. And I'll actually go on an angle so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna get a little higher 
with my prop tower. So I want to be able to support my whole upper body. And you can build this prop tower even right up to your chest, just depending on your own flexibility um, and mobility and tight spaces in your, in your back. Um, you can also, if this is uncomfortable in your low back, another option here is to sit on a blanket or a towel. And then I would build this a little bit differently if I'm going to use my, my blanket. This is not the most graceful practice in terms of the transition. So we keep it fluid and, uh, and we keep adapting. So here I am with my right ankle over crossed in front of my left. I'm in a cross-legged position. I'm elevated on my blanket, so it's a little more support to my hips and low back. And all I'm gonna do is cross my forearms, doesn't matter which one's in front of the other, and I'm just gonna round through my back and really just bring my forehead to my forearms. And I built my tower a little bit too close to my body. I need some extra space here. So find those adjustments. And then all you're going to do is bring your forehead down. So this is one of those poses where you are creating more space in between your vertebrae right, your upper back, your neck, right into your lumbar spine. And perhaps you're not even aware that there's tension that you are holding. Take a moment to assess. Remember to stay in the seat of the witness. I like to think of myself as almost a scientist in this practice right? As we study our body. And it's not so much to categorize or to create um, a whole analogy, but it is just this biofeedback, right? Oh, I'm carrying this around. Oh, yeah. And then we get to ask ourselves, do we want to carry this around anymore? Do we want to carry this tension? Just continue to breathe. At any point, you can always pick up your head and maybe rest your chin down. It's okay that the back is rounded. We're just steadying ourselves. Notice where the tension slash resistance slash holding is in your body and breathe into it, right? Meet all of the tension and the resistance with a breath. Good, we're gonna stay here on this side for five more breaths. So notice as I give you this measurement, if it allows your body to surrender a bit more. If it's an invitation for an extra bit of softening, right? That's interesting to notice too. Stay here for two more breaths. And one more breath. Good. And we're going to lift all the way back up again. Just notice. You can even take a few shoulder rolls back. And then you're going to switch the cross of your legs. Okay. So this is a very gentle opening for your outer hips, for your low back. And we have the support for our upper body. You're going to take a deep breath here. And then again, you're going to slowly just allow your upper body to come forward. Again, cross at the forearms. You can cross at the arms. It doesn't really matter. Again, make sure that you have a little space 
between your legs and your prop tower, especially if you have a longer torso. And then you can bring your forehead down. And if it doesn't feel comfortable to rest your forearm, your forehead on your forearm, just bring your forehead right down to the prop itself. You know, part of this restorative practice and why our why we wanted to present it to you is because um, often we don't necessarily think of a restorative practice um, as um, doing something for us, right? We're not necessarily working up a sweat, not exactly moving our body, um, where we're releasing tension in a traditional way. But what a restorative practice can do, as you can feel, has so many benefits, right? The potential is limitless. We get to relax. This is very different than, let's say, taking a nap right? Taking a nap is incredibly restorative to our energy levels. You know, it's great to get, you know, proper good night's sleep. But a restorative practice is very purposefully, diligently, and methodically allowing the parts of our body to release tension and consciously restoring our nervous system. And so, when we walk away from this practice, we say to ourselves, oh, I need to make time to restore my spirit. I need to make time to really relax, right? Which is different than just having a good night's sleep. Right, even tucking our head right here allows the mind to clear. We're going to stay here for another five breaths. Let your breaths be bright, soft, and long. Give your body the chance to receive them. Okay, take your last breath. And then we're going to lift up. So I'm going to give you one more pose. And we're going to need to move to a wall. So I will show you the setup. And if you don't have a wall that's close to the screen, that's fine. You can, um, you can just watch me and then perhaps go there for a few minutes because this is going to be um, our last pose before we move into our uh, Shavasana, our resting pose. So I'm going to unpack my prop tower, move my props off to the side, but I want to hang on to my blanket. And then I'm going to take my mat all the way over to my little closet here. I'm just going to take my edge, the edge of my mat to closet and I have a blanket it's not folded perfectly but it will do um, for some of you who have a little bit more flexibility in your low back you may want to take a few blankets and you can just stack them right almost like the princess and the pea of the mattresses but for today and the purposes of our short time together I'm just going to use one blanket and I'm going to bring it right to the edge, maybe a few, actually a few, a few centimeters away from, from the closet. And this will be the same um, entry as we, um, as we did. We're going to repeat the same way that we got into the, the pose with the chair. This will be the same entry. So I just want to get myself into a fetal position. I'm just going to stack my knees. I'm going to come down onto my forearm. And I want to try to lift my butt up onto 
the blanket. And then from here, I'm going to roll onto my back. And I'm going to lift my feet up. And then from here, you're going to extend your arms down by your side. So th this is not dissimilar to the pose that we did with the chair, except the benefits that you receive now is very much like a headstand um, or a handstand, a forearm stand, an inversion pose, where the blood rushes all the way back up to the heart. It just circulates through the body. Any fatigue that we feel in our legs um, just begins to release. This is very um, energizing for the spirit. This is a pose when I walk away from, I always feel much lighter. And inversions in yoga, whether you're doing a headstand or a handstand, you know, they're known to be really the fountain of youth. And so having the blood rush down from the legs and just kind of recycle and wash through our upper body and wash through the heart, right? We get that, that flush of um, warmth in our cheeks and, and we feel lighter, you know, and on, on an energetic level, it also feels more restorative we feel a little bit more vibrant, rejuvenated, refreshed. So we're gonna to continue to hang here, literally, for a few more moments. You can bring your arms down by your side, you can bring your palms to your chest or your belly for a more tactile approach so you can feel the breath. Make sure that you draw the chin in towards the chest so your neck is long. If you've been joining us for this restorative series, I encourage you to write down the benefits after you practice and notice the clarity in your mind that comes. Notice if you're softer, the people that you interact with after your practice. Notice if you get a better night's sleep Notice if you're more clear in your communication. Notice if you are less irritable. We're gonna stay here for another five breaths. Please know that with any of these poses, you can stay anywhere from three to five to 10 to 20 minutes. But for the sake of our short time together, I have cut down our ability <laughs> to be in these poses longer. So just stay here for one more deep breath. And then we're going to bend the knees and you're going to roll over to one side catch your chest with one hand, and then you're gonna lift yourself all the way up to sit. So we're gonna set up for our last pose, which is called Shavasana. It's our resting pose. And we're gonna do it with a little bit more support than we usually do for our more active practices. And if you enjoy this, and I encourage you to set up and take the time to create this kind of Shavasana, this more restorative Shavasana. Our uh, Shavasana will be short today. Um, however, if you are watching this and your home is quiet and you have that extra time, then I encourage you to just hang out there and luxuriate in the time and the rest. Um, with this particular practice, it's lovely to do at the end of the day, um, 
before bed, after you get, you know, per off um, calls, after you get off your screens. Um, this really is like sending your mind and your heart and your body into like the washing machine, right? Just scouring of um, just scouring any confusion and um, an irritation in the body and the mind. So I am going to take one of my bolsters here and I'm gonna put a blanket on top. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use my blanket to cover myself up. I'm gonna take my blocks, right? So you just play with it, right? What feels comfortable, what doesn't? So I've elevated my, my little prop and I'm gonna actually use my blanket to cover myself up. Because we're not moving as much in a restorative practice, we may get cold when we start to relax. Has that ever happened to you? When you relax your body, when you, you know, when you notice that you are fatigued, you may get a little bit chilly. So I'm gonna place my knees over my bolster. I'm gonna keep my blanket here. And then I'm going to gently lower myself down. And I'm going to cover myself up right here, just my upper body. If you want, you can take the time and cover up your whole body. But this feels warm to me. And I'm going to spin my palms up. You may notice with your legs elevated again, you feel that um, less curvature in your spine, your sacrum feels a little closer to the mat, which helps to ground you. Take the time to just set up. You can close your eyes. Now feel the effects of your whole practice. Notice the spaciousness in your mind, in your body. Perhaps you feel more at home in your body, more comfortable, more at ease. I think that's really important for us to do right now, facilitate practices that help us feel at ease. begin to draw our attention back inward. If you have the time and the space, please stay. Otherwise, take a very deep breath here in through the nose. Softly let the breath go. I'm just gonna reach one of my arms up and over the head, and then the other one. I'm going to bend the knees, bring the feet down to the mat, and then roll over to one side. Take an extra moment. Gather yourself all the way up to sit. Enjoy this feeling. We'll meet with the legs crossed and the palms right at the heart center. 
I want to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for choosing you and restoring your mind and spirit and heart during this time. Namaste.